welcome to Advanced Psychopathology. I am Dr. Amy Evans. As we dive into the topic of psychopathology, it is important to understand a number of key ideas. Number one, the idea of diagnosing human beings with a mental illness. Number two, how mental illness and psychopathology develops. Number three, what does diagnosis actually mean? Number four, how to evaluate the research on psychopathology. And number five, the importance of compassion and understanding of those who struggle with what we call mental illness or psychopathology. So what is psychopathology? There is certainly much debate about what psychopathology means. Ultimately, it is about the study of mental illness or mental disorders. Our class is called Advanced Psychopathology. Sometimes such courses are referred to as abnormal psychology. Thus, the term abnormal is part of how we think about psychopathology. What we see as normal versus abnormal has shifted with time and is different in different cultures. Thus, one thing you will need to consider as you move through this course will be, is psychopathology just a social construction versus something we can consider objectively? Generally, we consider something pathological when it does not seem adaptive with present society. In this course, we will focus on what we refer to as the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, in its fifth edition as we discuss psychopathology. The DSM focuses on the definitions and symptoms of particular mental illnesses we will cover in this course. What is psychopathological is categorized into a particular set of criteria that fit together to help those professionals working with mental disorders to have a common language. And with most recent additions, these diagnoses are expected to be based on scientific research. These diagnoses give professionals in the field a language that is common to help explain what is happening with a client. That way we can communicate, when appropriate, about what we think is going on with a client to someone else who might be working with the client at the same time, such as a counselor and a psychiatrist both working with the client, the counselor doing therapy and the psychiatrist prescribing medications to help with the symptoms a client is struggling with. Or if we are transferring care of a client to another professional. It is also involved in communicating the focus of treatment to insurance companies. Thus, if we say someone is struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder, those of us in such helping professions as psychology, counseling, marriage and family therapy, and others understand what that means based on the DSM criteria. Do note there is controversy around certain diagnoses, and not all professionals in the field even agree with the idea of diagnosing in the first place. With the different versions of the DSM, there have been shifts and changes in what is considered mental illness or a mental disorder. And I am certain there will be additional changes in the future versions of the DSM. Let's briefly discuss the DSM history. The DSM is published by the American Psychiatric Association. Do keep in mind then that psychiatrists are medical doctors. They have the same training as any other medical doctor and they specialize in psychiatry in particular. A general definition of psychiatry relates to the study of as well as the treatment of mental disorders. The first DSM was published in 1952 and included between 60 to 106 diagnoses at the time, depending on the sources you consult, just 103 pages long at that time. The DSM-2 came along in 1968. It is not unusual for there to be multiple printings of different books like the DSM, thus it is interesting to note that it was the sixth printing of the DSM-2 that homosexuality was taken out of the DSM, which had been previously included. Then in the DSM-3 in 1980, now listing 265 diagnoses, the DSM-3R, which is the revised edition, came along in 1987 with 297 diagnoses listed. And then the DSM-4 was in 1994. This is the one I was first exposed to in my training as an undergraduate student and then graduate student. This version contained 365 diagnoses, quite a jump from the first version. The DSM-4-TR, which stands for text revision, showed up in 2000, which expanded the research base details shared in the fourth version of the DSM. Then the most recent, the DSM-5, was published in 2013, 947 pages. 
Interestingly, they shifted from Roman numerals to our typical Arabic numerals to give the option for decimals, thus potentially a version 5.1, 5.2, and so forth. You will dive into resources to gain a deeper understanding of the history of this diagnostic system we use. As we move forward through the modules, do note that diagnosis is complex and misdiagnosis happens. Keep in mind that those of us who have been trained to use the DSM system of diagnosis get specific training to do so. You are reviewing the information in this undergraduate psychology course, but it requires further training to be able to use a system of diagnosing. It is almost a thousand pages after all, and we are only covering a portion of the diagnoses in this course. The discussion in the course will be used to learn from each other. I expect that reading each other's posts will further your reflection and help you expand your thoughts for each week's journal. As you begin your journey in this course, I do want to make a special note even now. We want to make sure we are working to reduce stigma related to mental illness. Thus, the language we want to use is called person-first language. This type of focus helps us, even as we state something, to remember that it is a person we are talking about. The person is not their diagnosis. They are much more complex. We want to keep in mind the uniqueness of each individual and show respect as well. We would say the person with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder or an individual struggling with bipolar symptoms rather than saying the bipolar person. Keep this in mind as you progress through the course. You will learn even more about reducing stigma later in the course. I am praying for God's blessings and that each one of you will gain what God wants you to through this course.